This video is brought to you by Robinhood, the investment brokers that let you buy stocks, ETFs, and cryptocurrencies all commission free. There's still time to take advantage of this historic 2020 stock market crash. And if you sign up using the link in the description below, you'll instantly receive one free stock without even depositing a single penny. No, this still isn't my real portfolio, but I have added to it a bit like the stock on your screen. That's Cody. They make like makeup, Revlon, stuff like that. What's up, YouTube? Capital G here got some excellent duels for you guys to check out in this video my goodness you want to talk about a mismatch do we ever have one we have a deck that is trending towards tier one status in the ocg and the infernal noble knights or i guess you know i still like calling them the flame noble knights because i think that name was better but uh, they're gonna be dueling against the little old cubic deck and this seems like a complete mismatch on paper as uh, cubics are nowhere near as as good as the flame noble knight deck however there is one major achilles heel with a lot of these meta decks guys they do not have enough removal especially when they're just going and trying to make as many negates as they can turn one a lot of times the opponent won't be able to get rid of a single monster that is unable to be destroyed by battle and cubics is a deck that has multiple cards like that they can kind of capitalize off that anyways before we roll this if you guys enjoy duels like this just give the video a thumbs up up, help spread the word, help the channel growth, and uh, really help the YouTube algorithm out. Anyways, the uh, Flame Noble Knight deck is going first and uh, you know he opens up with a very strong power play i've talked about this card right here the sublime knight um, x paladin this card is a one card isode which is basically all you need to get going when you are playing noble knights because i sold gets you a rota search and then it also gets you a monster from your deck and then you can just continue on doing things with like link cross and synchro summoning now that noble knights have some like really really good synchro monsters you can start doing some even more wacky stuff and uh, this is interesting Interesting. He's actually playing Flameville Counter of all things. He's like, Cap, I'm not losing the Dark Ruler no more, baby. <laughs> I'm not going to lose to that card. I've lost too many duels, making my big negates, and then losing to a Dark Ruler no more. So obviously, he's playing that to make sure that he doesn't lose. And, uh, you know, he is going to go into even some things like the uh, Stardust Charge Warrior and the Drag Knight, and he has the Emperor Charles, which, of course, you always want to pair Emperor Charles with the Smoke Grenade of Thief. Even if you don't open with it, you can send it to the graveyard with I sold, and then during the end phase, you get it back from your graveyard, you equip it, blow it up, look at a card in your opponent's hand, and send it to the graveyard. So who do you guys think is going to win this duel? The person with all the negates or the person playing the little old Cubic deck? Because you might be surprised. Let's see what Cubics can do. I'm not sure any of these spells and traps are actually going to resolve. Looks like they're all pretty much going to be negated. Cubic Dharma, and then also Cubic Wave. Like, these cards are not resolving. But the Cubic cards do activate in the graveyard, so it's not that big of a deal. He even had his, um, I believe that was, what, Monster Gate negated. Now, the interesting thing is, he's going to start putting Cubic counters on his opponent's monsters. And that not only negates the effects, but it also makes it so they can't attack. So he actually, like, he's not in the worst position. It's not like he's going to just get OTK'd during his next turn. He's also going to lose that Cubic Ascension during the end phase to Emperor Charles. But don't worry, it's not the biggest thing that's not the biggest thing because he can do this he can say oh you just basically walked into my trap i'm going to use cubic extension from the graveyard and now i'm going to get two copies of v jam and now you can't attack buddy i can just basically sit on these guys they cannot be destroyed by card effects or excuse me they can't be destroyed by battle and he actually went ahead and put a cubic counter on emperor charles this is the point where cubics can kind of just sit here and stall and eventually they can be back into the duel nice maxi by the way <laughs> <laughs> must be nice to have that card he is going to ultimately use i think called by the grave to get rid of v jam's effect but now guess what he's basically like a turn away from being in this game he's gonna go ahead and well no I, actually i think he's just doing more stalling yeah he's just doing more stalling using unification of the cubics and he says you can't break through my stronghold now this is interesting i don't think i've ever seen anybody use aurorodon's effect that or aurorodon's effect that does the mass removal you like you you totally forget this card even does that but uh he went ahead and used it getting rid of his cards that he felt weren't useful but doesn't matter cubics can float baby so we're still in here and ultimately if you give cubics enough time 
they basically will eventually get to like they'll get to their boss monsters and probably start winning now he finally drew his kind of non-targeting removal or his his kind of out that would be the god phoenix gear freed you can search this card with iso which if he would have done that he probably would have won the duel uh probably two three turns ago looks like he's about to win but you know don't disrespect cubics don't forget about them because anytime they have cubic karma and they can just go ahead and search the uh you know crimson nova this is the win condition of the deck and he also has cubic aura in our cubic wave that's aura's the ocg name he has cubic wave in his hand he's going to special summon it he's going to activate the effect this means that he cuts boil Oak savage dragon in half and he his attack gets doubled basically it's a gg because uh keep in mind the uh crimson nova can attack twice if he destroys something even though he tries to negate it with god phoenix Giffrey, this guy does not care uh he's unaffected by those monster or by that monster effect and he still does 3,000 burn damage in the end phase so even if he wasn't going to do the burn damage here from this cubic it wouldn't have mattered both players would have just taken the burn damage and he would have won through that so like cubics is a deck that's like a lot of these decks that just want to do negates 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 if they if they make a board that's full of a bunch of monsters and they don't have like spot removal a lot of times the cubic deck can just stall infinitely essentially using that v jams and stuff like that and using their graveyard effects and they can actually get some victories that they probably shouldn't have had because uh yeah cards like maxi probably not going to do anything if you're looking to break an established board and your opponent's just stalling on one monster anyway second duel should be significantly quicker because we got blind go second crusadia against some not so great el dorado deck i don't really understand it feels like people are trying to pull eldlick into every different direction i mean i still think the el dorado deck just leave it as a pure deck but man people trying to play zombie el dorado and synchro spam el dorado and sometimes you end up with turns like this which are not obviously ideal and we know what crusadia any two crusadia monsters is an otk so he's going to go ahead and special summon the parallel exceed that card gives you another one when you special summon it and it basically special summons just like a crusadia monster anytime like a monster is you know link summon he's got the equimax and uh it's just that easy dude <laughs> equimax uh plus this guy he's gonna do piercing damage and he's gonna do double battle damage and worst of all i mean he, he left the glow up bloom on field i mean you do not leave this card on field unless well really you, you just don't leave this card on field usually you go into like link karibo or something like that and then you uh you know at least have a way of blocking attack and even when it goes to the graveyard if you have what zombie world on the field you can pull baller drop out of your deck but feels like he was just gonna get one shot regardless of what he was trying to do anyways these are what the decks look like on paper first up we have the blind go second build of crusadia which at this point kind of looks standard i think i showed off uh crusadia not that long ago on the channel and it was also running hey true nate that was uh the build that chain link ran and he was running triple of this in the main deck it's been a while since i've seen uh somebody running like the sky striker engine well I, I guess it's not even like a full engine at this point because it is just hornet drones but keep in mind going into these crusadia monsters like these extra deck monsters uh not not mag not magius but the higher end ones basically like they're kind of generic and this one also has grave diggers trap pole which um you know it's a way of like stopping nibiru if you happen to get two level fours on field you can go into reflasia now i think that the most ideal way of going for reflasia is going to be with parallel exceed because this card is like it's almost like a crusadia in in the sense that you summon it if you um like when you link summon a monster you special summon this guy to one of its link points which is very similar to like a crusadia but then this card is also good because not only can you trigger that crusadia or that link monster's effect uh as a lot of these crusadia monsters uh, they they trigger when something is summoned to their link point a la salamon great uh sunlight wolf but in addition to that this card just pulls out another copy of itself so that gives you a way of getting an instant rank four on field which more than likely is going to be your reflasia and it, you don't have to summon it to that link point you can summon it or whatever and then you actually have an out this build also has super polymerizations more ways of blinding seconds interesting with uh three copies of crusadia power i'm used to seeing this card as like a one of maybe like a two max because it is searchable throughout your combo when you get to regulex usually people just search it for free so i don't really see a need 
of playing like three. If you already hard draw it, then usually people just search the field spell. So I don't know about running three copies of this. I would maybe run something different. Uh, the uh, cubic deck. The cubic deck is interesting. If I can pull it up. Yeah, here's the cubic deck. And this build obviously is based around, well, not just running a ton of cubic cards, but sending these cards to the graveyard as quickly as possible. So the thing about the cubic spells and traps, and you guys saw this in the door, is basically every single one of them activates in the graveyard. So it's perfectly fine to run things like Monster Gate. If these cards hit the graveyard by that, like you just excavate them to the grave, it's perfectly fine. And if you, um, you know, send them to the graveyard with something like Puffum Pow Pop Up, same deal. In fact, that's the reason why I think he's running stuff like uh, Galaxy Cyclone in here, another card that can be used from the graveyard. I tried Cubics not that long ago. I wasn't running Puffum Pow Pop Up. I was running, uh, what was it? I was running Magician Souls for the same exact concept. Concept. Uh, it, wor it worked out okay. It wasn't like the greatest engine ever, but it is definitely something to look at. Hell, he even has rise to full height in here. So, like, if you do run cubics, you're probably like, it's probably a good decision to run things like twin twisters, cards that require discards, because basically all of your spells and traps essentially float. And you're already going to be running things like foolish burial goods, anyways. If you guys are interested in the decks, of course, they will be in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. As always, subscribe if you have not already, and turn on that notification bell for daily videos.